Scene 3. It is night, a few weeks later. Everyone is in bed. There is complete quiet. In the Vandans' room, a match flares up for a moment, and then is quickly put out. Mr. Vandan, in bare feet, dressed in underwear and trousers, is dimly seen coming stealthily down the stairs and into the main room, where Mr. and Mrs. Frank and Margot are sleeping. He goes to the food safe and again lights a match. Then he cautiously opens the safe, taking out a half loaf of bread. As he closes the safe, it creaks. He stands rigid. Mrs. Frank sits up in bed. She sees him. Otto! Otto, komm schnell! Was ist los? Was ist passiert? Er stiehlt das Essen! You! You! Give me that! Putty? Putty, what is it? You dirty thief! Stealing food! You good for nothing! Mr. Dussel, for God's sake! Help me, Peter! Let him go! Let go! You greedy, selfish! Putty, what is it? The bread! He was stealing the bread! It was you! And all the time we thought it was the rats! Mr. Van Don, how could you? I am hungry. We are all of us hungry. I see the children getting thinner and thinner. Your own son, Peter, I've heard him moan in his sleep he's so hungry. And you come in the night and steal food that should go to them, to the children. He needs more food than the rest of us. He's used to more. He's a big man. And you! You're worse than he is. You're a mother, and yet you sacrifice your child to this man, this, this... Edith! Be- Edith! Don't think I haven't seen you, always saving the choicest bits for him. I've watched you day after day, and I've held my tongue, but not any longer. Not after this. Now I want him to go. I want him to get out of here. Edith. Get out of here? What do you mean? Just that. Take your things and get out. You're speaking in anger. You cannot mean what you are saying. I mean exactly that. For two long years we have lived here, side by side. We have respected each other's rights. We have managed to live in peace. Are we now going to throw it all away? I know this will never happen again. Will it, Mr. Vanta? No, no. He steals once, he'll steal again. Edith, please. Let us be calm. We'll all go to our rooms. And afterwards, we'll sit down quietly and talk this out. We'll find some way... No, no, no more talk. I want them to leave. He put us out on the streets. There are other hiding places. A cellar, a closet. I know. And we have no money left even to pay for that. I'll give you money. Out of my own pocket, I'll give it gladly. Mr. Frank, you told Pudi you'd never forget what he'd done for you when you came to Amsterdam. You said you could never repay him. That you... If my husband had any obligation to you, he's paid it over and over. Edith, I've never seen you like this before. I don't know you. I should have spoken out long ago. You can't be nice to some people. There would have been plenty for all of us if you hadn't come in here. We don't need the Nazis to destroy us. We're destroying ourselves. Give this to Meep. She'll find you a place. Mother, you're not putting Peter out. Peter hasn't done anything. He'll stay, of course. When I say I must protect the children, I mean Peter, too. I'd have to go if Father goes. He's no father to you, that man. He doesn't know what it is to be a father. I wouldn't feel right. I couldn't stay. Very well, then. I'm sorry. No. Peter, no. I don't care about the food. They can have mine. I don't want it. Only don't send them away. It'll be daylight soon. They'll be caught. Please. Mother. They're not going now. They'll stay here until Meep finds them a place. But one thing I insist on. He must never come down here again. He must never come to this room where the food is stored. We'll divide what we have. An equal share for each. You can cook it here and take it up to him. Oh, no. No. We haven't sunk so far that we're going to fight over a handful of rotten potatoes. Mrs. Frog, Mr. Frog, Margot, Ann, Peter, Mrs. Von Don, Mr. Von Don, myself. Mrs. Frog? It's Meep. At this hour? It is trouble. I beg you, don't let her see a thing like this. On, Peter, Mrs. Von Don, Mr. Von Don. Stop it! Myself. Stop it! Mr. Frank, Margot, On, Peter, Mrs. Von Don, Mr. Von Don, myself. 
Mrs. Frog? You're keeping the big ones for yourself. All the big ones. Look at the size of that. And that. Stop it. Stop it. Mr. Frank, the most wonderful news. The invasion has begun. Go on. Tell them. Tell them. Did you hear that, everybody? Did you hear what I said? The invasion has begun. The invasion. Where? When? When, Meep? It began early this morning. Oh, Mr. Van Damme, did you hear that? <gasps> How do you know? The radio. The BBC. They said they landed on the coast of Normandy. The British? British, Americans, French, Dutch, Poles, Norwegians. All of them. More than 4,000 ships. Churchill spoke, and General Eisenhower. D-Day, they call it. Thank God it's come. At last. I'm going to tell Mr. Crawler. This will be better than any blood transfusion. What part of Normandy did they land? Did they say? Normandy. That's all I know. I'll be up the minute I hear some more. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? <sighs> Pooty, Pooty, what is it? What happened? Please, I'm so ashamed. Oh, for God's sake. Don't, Pooty. It doesn't matter now. Didn't you hear what Meep said? The invasion has come. We're going to be liberated. This is a time to celebrate. To steal bread from children. We've all done things that we're ashamed of. Look at me. The way I've treated Mother. So mean and horrid to her. No, Annika, no. Oh, Mother, I was. I was awful. Not like me. No one is as bad as me. Stop it now. Let's be happy. Here. Here. Schnapps. Lachaim. <laughs> when I think of the terrible things I said. No, no, you were right. <laughs> that I should speak that way to you, our friends, our guests. Stop it! You're spoiling the whole invasion. We're all in much better spirits these days. There's still excellent news of the invasion. The best part about it is that I have a feeling that friends are coming. Who knows? Maybe I'll be back in school by fall. Ha ha, the joke is on us. The warehouse man doesn't know a thing, and we are paying him all that money. Wednesday, the 2nd of July, 1944. The invasion seems temporarily to be bogged down. Mr. Crawler has to have an operation, which looks bad. The Gestapo have found the radio that was stolen. Mr. Dussel says they'll trace it back, and back to the thief, and then it's just a matter of time till they get to us. Everyone is low. Even poor Pim can't raise their spirits. I have often been downcast myself, but never in despair. I can shake off everything if I write. But, and that is the great question, will I ever be able to write well? I want to so much. I want to go on living, even after my death. Another birthday has gone by, so now I am fifteen. Already I know what I want. I have a goal and opinion.